Hey folks, uh, I've got some uh, static equilibrium examples for you. One's a pull table, the other one's a ladder. Um, and on this one, we're going to throw in some angles. So in the previous video, we just had everything at right angles to each other. Well, most things in life aren't that way. So, uh, so here's the first example. Uh, this actually, this example comes from a, a friend of mine and I were, were how well, he was helping me move. And, uh, we were moving our, my pool table down our basement stairs. And the pool table is rather heavy. Uh, uh, now, I'm going to put a number of 200 pounds on this example, but it's probably actually more than that. And, um, of course, I put my friend at the bottom of the stairs, and I was at the top, and you'll see why in a minute. So uh, I happen to have a pool table here. Let me uh, get that out. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, pardon me one second. Computer just froze. So here's my pool table. Uh, no, it's not really mine, but I have one. <laughs> so I want you to imagine that there's two people carrying this down the stairs, okay? And it's at an angle. Um, and I did estimate the angle. I actually measured it um, when I first came up with this example. Um, these, so this is going down my basement stairs. So let's say I'll call this theta, and I'll give you the number in a minute. So let's say here's person one right here. And I'll, I'll call that person A. That was my friend. And then I was up here. I was person B. Okay. And we were holding this thing up as we carried it down the stairs. And um, some dimensions on this. I have a full-size pool table. So it was eight foot by four foot approximately. It's actually a little bigger than that, but we'll go with th those numbers. Let's say the weight of the pool table was 200 pounds. Okay. So, um, and let's assume it's a symmetrical pool table. So with just that data, oh, and the angle uh, was about 40 degrees going down my basement stairs. So with those two things, um, what we're going to figure out is we're going to figure out uh, how much of the 200 pounds uh, my friend A carried and how much of the 200 pounds the B carried, okay? So um, as far as FBDs goes, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and use the diagram for the FBD because I'm three or two thirds of the way there. So a, me, or my friend is pushing up on the pool table, and then me, B, is pushing up on the pool table. What's the only other force acting on the pool table? Well, the force of gravity acting straight down. Now, by the way, at this moment, uh, if you haven't drawn this sketch, draw it pretty big because we're going to draw all over it. And um, make sure you spend a moment making sure you got everything written down there. So if you need that, go ahead and pause the video for a sec. Okay, so uh, how do we do this? Well, we're going to start with net force uh, equals zero. Okay, well, this is easy, right? A plus B is going to have to equal the weight, which is 200. So A plus B is equal to 200 pounds. Well, duh, right? Okay, so that's easy enough. The question is how much of that is A and how much of that is B? So that's where I have to uh, do a net torque. So we're going to do net torque about some axis equals zero. Now, again, like in the previous video I mentioned, you can pick any point you want to measure torque about. And I usually suggest picking one of the unknown application points as a place to do torque. So when I look at this problem, I see this point right here as being the place where I'm going to do net torque is zero. So I'm going to do net torque about that point is zero. Therefore, my friend's force won't cause torque about that axis, and I won't have to worry about my friend's force. And therefore, the only unknown will be my force, okay? So uh, I'll go ahead and call clockwise positive, all right? So um, we have A times zero, okay? Uh, plus, so the weight of the pull table here, that's causing a clockwise torque. It's trying to make the pull table spin clockwise about that X. So that's a positive. So that's going to be 200. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. I could figure out how much of this weight is perpendicular to um, this radius. Okay. And that wouldn't be so bad. Um, but I'm just going to have this practice with perpendicular lever arms. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how much of that radius is perpendicular to that line of force. Now, for now, I'll call that X. So that would be 200 times X. Now, we'll have to go back and figure out what that X is in a minute, but um, that's not too bad, it turns out. All right, and then B. Now, B is trying to make this thing spin counterclockwise, so that's going to be a minus B. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at this line of force. 
and I'm going to find what's perpendicular to that. Okay. Well, this one's a little easier. Okay. The whole pull table has a length of eight. This is a right triangle with a hypotenuse of eight. We have our angle here. We want the adjacent leg, which is cosine. So this would be um, times eight cosine of theta. And I gave you theta was 40 degrees. We'll plug it in in a second. Okay. So the only thing we got to do now is figure out what X is. We got to do a little geometry to find X. Okay. So if we knew this distance from the pivot to here, then X would be that distance. Well, I'll call that D just to have that on there. That distance would, or that X would be D cosine of theta. So now I got to figure out D. Well, then I'm going to look at this little triangle right here. Okay. And I'm going to find this, I'll call it Y. Uh, if, if you do a little geometry, you'll figure out that this angle here and this angle here are congruent. Okay, those are similar triangles. Um, and one way to look at that is these two angles here and here, okay, are, well, thank you, you can see it a little better. This angle here and this angle here are uh, congruent. And so in, this, in these two right triangles, if, here's another right triangle, then these other two angles have to be congruent, okay? So uh, y um, over, this would be 2 right there. So y over 2 would equal tangent of that angle. So y would equal 2 tangent of that angle. And then d would equal, well, the half the length of the pull table is 4. So it's 4 minus y, okay? And so that would be 4 minus 2 tangent theta. And then finally, what's x? Well, x equals d cosine of theta, which would be 4 minus 2 tangent theta times cosine theta. Okay, so that's our perpendicular lever arm right there. Okay, now again, if you wanted, you could figure out how much of the weight is perpendicular to the pull table, uh, that radius there. Um, which actually I don't think would be that hard here. Um, but I want to have practice with perpendicular lever arms. So I did a little geometry to find that perpendicular lever arm right there. So that's going to go right here. Okay. And then everything else I know, the only thing, oh, this all has to equal zero, right? Net torque has got to be zero. So um, I have every value in here except for B. Okay. So A times zero is zero. We have 200 times this X thing, which is... 4 minus 2 tangent theta times cosine of theta. And then that has to equal B times 8 cosine of theta. Okay. And again, theta is equal to 40 degrees. So if you plug all that in and you solve for B, you should get a force of 58 pounds. So the person on the right only has to carry 58 of the 200 pounds. That means A has to carry um, 142 pounds. Okay, so uh, A is definitely getting a short end of the deal, right? Uh, they're definitely carrying more of the way of the pull table. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to actually do the next example uh, on the next video to keep these not too long. So um, I hope that was helpful, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.